and the powerful Mike McGoldrick doing Air Jerks. Welcome to a new show episode. Another new show episode. It's new show. It's new show. Why is it called new show? Nobody knows. It's new show. New cycles in our online training programs, TTT Compete and TTT Fitness start Monday, October 25th. Sign up before October 31st to save 20%. Head to trainingthinktank.com for more details. Today's training, we are gonna do build to a max split jerk. It's gonna end up being a tough single for Mike. Mia's gonna do a modification, which I'll show you about. Then we're gonna move into two or three supersets of bench press, eight to 10 reps. We're gonna keep it tough and unbroken, move directly into 45 seconds of AMRAP wall walks. Two minute rest between, back and forth through that. What day is this in the program? That's why I started stuttering a little bit. I don't know what day this is in the program. They picked it. Let's find out. Tuesday, October. <laughs> Today? Today? What? What's the question? What October 19th. October 19th. All right, so Mike's gonna build up to a relatively tough single split, uh, split jerk. Mia is going to do a modification that I'm gonna show you and I'm gonna give this handy mic to Chris. So if you jack your wrist up, can, how close does it need to be? I don't know. If people's wrists get jacked up, this front rack position and that extension starts to hurt people. So you can do a modification with straps like this. Set the straps up. Then you get into a front rack and hold on to the straps. It keeps your wrists in that neutral angle. So Mia is gonna do jerk dip squats with the bar to protect her wrist. And then she's gonna do split stance, strict press with the dumbbells. Am I covering the new show thing? Just don't break it. <laughs> okay. Expensive. All right. So that's what we're doing. They're gonna warm up and then I'll be back to talk about it. Yeah, I am gonna talk to them because Mia, are you jumping from 45 to 135? <laughs> Is that not gonna be hard? Are you gonna do 315 with Mike? You need more warm up for your drink I think so. Did you even do any split jerks? Yeah. Oh, you did? Okay. What <laughs> the hell are these people? <laughs> All right, so here's the modification Mia's doing for jerk dips. Should I give her cue corrections as we're doing this? Yeah. Nah, fuck it. I feel like this is going to be a lot harder to talk about than a Metcon where there's things moving at a million miles an hour. Taking the wrong attitude. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Mike's doing split jerks up to 180, or starting at 185. He's going to build up to, he said somewhere around 315. So this is still like 50% for him, 60%. He's going to keep the day relatively technical. We're doing this strength session more as a model than a model for how you would go through a training session, how you would make modifications, and how you can use a competitive training program in an off season to continue getting stronger without really feeling like you're having to drop the hammer all the time. So Mike is getting back into training. So you've seen some, some of these new shows and it's probably been about a month now of him kind of getting back into training, but he generally as a master's athlete doesn't really try to start pushing a lot of super heavy loads until he gets closer to competition, which for him will be next year's open. So in the off season for him, he kind of goes into maintenance mode on his strength work and puts a little bit more effort into energy system training. So he'll kind of keep this as just technical focus. Mia is currently nursing a little bit of a wrist thing. <laughs> and yeah, no, <laughs> she's just doing a little dead limp wrist, but she, uh, so she was gonna jump in on this session. She generally, if she's building up to a max, she'll do push jerks, not split jerks. So what we decided with this session is to still give her a heavy neural stimulus that's related to the jerk, which would be the jerk dip squat, which you're about to watch right now. 
So basically, it's the same type of position that you would get into front rack, brace, dip down, as if you were going to go into a split jerk. She's doing pause jerk dips here and back up. You can sometimes, if you're doing these, elevate the bar a little bit off your collarbone, but it's really just to train something really heavy in that front rack position and give you like that brain, central nervous system, high pressure stimulus. Then Mia's superset, I don't know if she's going right away. Are you going right away, Mia? Did you set a rest time for it? You're good? All right, go ahead. <laughs> so she's gonna do into the split stance. This was a, a and then she's just gonna do dumbbell strict press. So her wrists don't bother her in this position. It's really just the super heavy front rack that bothers her. And she said that, and she's splitting, splitting on both sides here and doing a couple reps on each side. So when she goes heavy, she uses the push jerk. You can see her stability here is not perfect. There's a little bit of wobble as she's trying to do that. So that's what the training effect for her is doing the split stance, dumbbell strict press. I can't read that. That's so damn small, Chris. What does that say? Oh, okay. That's what Mia's doing. That's Mia's training session. <laughs> All right. Now, Mike, he's at 255. Let's see how it looks. Still fast and powerful. What was that? Wow. <laughs> Mike, show off. Mike, are you a master's athlete officially right now? Yes. <laughs> Official. And he just fist bumped master's athlete Kyle Ruth, who's actually doing Wadapalooza qualifier over there. You'll see him in the background. Oh, I thought it was just a little bit of a squat. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> This is, this is how things get out of hand at TTT. Max talks a little too much shit. <laughs> All right, so she went up to 235. She's just using a mail bar here, so that way we can keep the setup relatively quick. So same thing, into the jerk, pause, come back up. So the velocity of that, the velocity of the extension, obviously would be a little bit different if you were actually moving into a split jerk, but this kind of slower, heavy strength overload can be helpful for just making people stronger overall, even in the speed lifts. And then Miguel going up to 275. I don't know how long has been going on between lifts. I'll try to pay attention to the clock. It's built to a tough single, so they're kind of on their own clock. I feel like CrossFitters generally, here's 275. Let's look. Bam, still fast, snappy. Mike's always had a really, really good, strong jerk. I think in his peak youthful days, it was 400. Now in a competitive peaking cycle, it's probably somewhere between 365 and 385 on a given competitive day. He hit 370 in the clean and jerk and semifinals. Oh, and here's Mia doing the split stance strict, strict press. And you could see her, her just split stance is not super, super natural of a position for her, which is why she uses the push jerk when she's building up to a 1RM. It's kind of a concept that you just think about in CrossFit with these different body types. Oh, hey, everyone. These different body types, different people will look different than the best in the field. So for example, most high level weightlifters are not gonna be five foot 11 with really long limbs and a soccer background. But as she developed in the sport of CrossFit, she's figured out, okay, well, what works well for her body? And she's continued to develop that. But we still try to train the components of like having that split stance might help with running speed or hip flexor strength or single leg hip stability, make her back more resilient. So it's kind of a way to get the training effect, even if we know we're not actually gonna use that pattern when we load to a max. All right, here she is, she went up again, 245. And the powerful woman successfully does the rep. So Mia is generally a really strong squatter. Well, actually she's just really strong. Um, and that position just looks real stable. I think in her Olympic lifts, the thing that would break down for her wouldn't necessarily be, oh, Chris is walking around the gym. I'm gonna continue talking about Mia. I'll circle back to that. Kyle's sitting on the bar, getting ready to do Wadapalooza qualifier. Claire, 
coming back from giving birth. Hi, Shannon. And we're back to Mia lifting. I've, oh, what I was saying about Mia before, with her Olympic lifting, it would n most likely not be limited by her legs, hips, back strength. It's going to be limited by overhead stability in the catch of the clean, or the catch of the snatch, or the catch of the jerk. Oh, and here's Mike. I think he's at 30, 295 or 305. Still really crisp, really strong. I can't tell if those are 10s or 15s. Miguel, are those 10s or 15s? 15, 15s. 15s, 305. So that still looks really easy. I don't know how much heavier he'll go for the day. He said 315. But the, since you guys are watching, he probably has a little bit of extra juice in the tank. Honestly, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I'm going. Should we talk about me? Uh, should you do that? Or, no, you just talk. Because I'm going from the rack, um, my limit today is the re-rack because I haven't been training it a lot. Uh, so I'm just kind of going off what feels strong and stable coming back down. Speed up is fine, and I can drop from blocks. Way more weight. So are you just gonna go a little heavier and drop the last I'll one? I'll probably go to like 315 and be my last rep. Cool. And then will you drop that one or still? Oh, yeah. yeah don't re-rack it. <laughs> Chris torturing. <laughs> I don't think he wanted to be on camera. Oh, and Brandon Dorman. I think they're talking strategy about Wadapalooza. Jacob Cantu in the background. Hey guys, now I'm over here. And Ryan over here. Should we get Ryan on, talk about running? Sure. <laughs> he would be so uncomfortable, like, what? Why'd you ask me? <laughs> hey, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I think Mia's got, Mia, is this last set? Last set? OK. Mia's last set, Mike's last set. All right, grab the straps, get into that front rack. Bam, let's see. So uh, one of the cues that you'd have here, and it, for anybody that just has a limit in front rack, people, if they're coming from a bodybuilding background, if you want to start to train front squat, this can be an alternative for you to start to train that pattern, train your hips, train your mid-back, and just kind of get used to that pattern as you develop the wrist flexibility. Eventually, you'll need it when you're doing a jerk, but if you're just looking for the training effect or getting into CrossFit, still want to kind of train those patterns, it's a good alternative, a good scaling option for you. Mike, what are you going to? <laughs> he got excited. <laughs> what is this now? Okay, 325. So 10 more pounds than he originally said. Here's Mia. She's going to do her next superset. And I think as the sets have gone on, she's got a little bit more stable. But this could be a good, you know, for somebody getting into training, if you're trying to learn the Olympic lifts, this, you could do this with a barbell as well. You can figure out which side is stronger and more stable for your actual split jerk, or you could just use it as a way to just get stronger and more stable as an accessory tool after you do your main lifts. Think having this type of variation in training can be helpful for longevity and joint health. All right, Mike, 325 should be the last lift. Let's see how it is. Big breath. Bam. Still fast, real strong, no re-rack. I wonder if you could hear that nice crispy bounce. I don't use weights that heavy that much anymore, so I don't get to hear it. All right, so we're done here now. Done with the A's and B's. So are we, uh, are we gonna pause beforehand? No, just no keep talking. Pause. No pause. <laughs> All right, so they're gonna they're gonna strip the bar. I guess I'll talk while uh, they're getting ready for the next portion, which is bench press and wall walks. They'll get all that set up. I think this was kind of a good example of what to do in training. You can't always push it. There are some athletes that maybe have like hyper resilience, great movement, a lot of resources, and they're able to train 24 seven at maximal intensity. And then other people that, you know, you get beat up or a certain joint gets, t gets broken down in training. And when you're going through that process, instead of just skipping training altogether, it's better to figure out how do I get something out of training that continues to make me better. So that's kind of what we wanted to illustrate with this today was instead of Mia just skipping it all together, we tried to come up with something 
that actually made sense to get her better for the sport that was similar in theme to what the overall program was intended to do. And that's what we do as coaches with our individual athletes, but we also do it when we're coaching a group, like in our TTT Compete program or TTT Fitness program. That's what we tell people to do is make adjustments when they're getting beat up or if something's get overrun. We try to educate people even in the beginning of it to figure out like how do you continue to have longevity because it's about doing it you know eight out of ten days consistently for years more so than getting really amped up and sticking to it for a month or for two months so that's kind of the culture we're trying to create and what we do create and our coaches are trying to illustrate for you all right so now we're getting set up oh we can't share bars here we didn't think about that Mia's bench press is not as big as Mike's bench press um, and maybe different arm lengths so they'll set up on different sides yeah, we should get a little bit as he's going. Is he starting right now? Yeah. Ask Brandon what he's doing. Brandon. So Kyle is doing Wadapalooza qualifier workout number two, which is the uh, clean and jerk and then handstand walk. So it's five clean and jerks with 50 feet of handstand walking in between. He's going to start at 325, see how that feels. If he hits it, he may stay there or he'll drop the 305 for the rest of them. So we'll see. Cool. Interesting test. We actually had an athlete that PR'd in that type of format, which is crazy. Um, and as Brandon walks away to go judge him and count his reps, they're getting filmed. So that's kind of, uh, that's illustrating two totally different things too. So we have training and what we would do on a regular basis and how we approach it, try to keep things a little bit, not relaxed necessarily, but it's obviously not the same pressure. Then Kyle in more competition mode, he's got to mark off all his lines, get his cone set up, get judges, make sure he's kind of in the zone, do a really intense warm up to get ready, create a strategy for it. Kind of illustrates the difference in approach from like you're just working out to you're actually trying to put yourself to the test. Um, where when you're getting put to the test, you have to step up to the test. You can't really make modifications. Oh, hey, Mia. <laughs> Those are her game shoes that she got. Uh, <laughs> okay. I, I don't know how to talk to you. It's, there's only really two options, bunny ears or the, what's that, the loop-de-doop? Yeah, the loop-de-doop. The pull around, loop-de-doop, pull through thingy, majiggy. Leave a comment. Leave a comment on YouTube if you do bunny ears or loop de doop. Is that that is the loop de doop? I don't know. I just coined the term. I, don't know. I do bunny ears. What do you do? I do the loop de doop. Oh, yeah, I don't know how to do the loop de doop. <laughs> yeah. I asked Ryan the other day to show me. He didn't know either. He bunny ears? I think. Okay. <laughs> Did you just make that up? <laughs> no. Ryan, weren't we talking about how to. Bunny how ears? Use? Do you use bunny ears? Uh, <laughs> I don't know what you do. <laughs> How do you not remember? You just, oh, you just do it automatically. Well, here's what I do. I just take the laces out, and then you're good. See? Ah, that's nice. Oh, here in the background, Kyle's about to start. Let's watch his first, his first lift. Too heavy. So his first lift, he was going to try to open 325. And the first lift, you're fresh, so you have the opportunity to pretty much go as heavy as you want. So he's trying to build up to a tough single. He, I think he's going to probably drop down from where he was there, but he's allowed to then now reset the clock. He'll figure out what his opener is going to be or attempt that same weight again. And then once he hits that first one, he'll start his handstand walk and dictate what the clean and jerk times are afterwards because this is a, more of a workout at this stage for somebody that's at this level of handstand walking. It's more figuring out how to strategize to get as big of a lift as you can because the handstand walk is not that high a volume for uh, an athlete there. All right, so back to the training over here. Mike's at 185. Hey. Mia is warming up. This is your first set? Yeah, Okay. And Kyle's going to do one more lift. Let's watch and see. Uh, see if he has more pull. Nice. A lot better. Come so on. Suck it. Nice. Good. So he'll then start his handstand walk. Oh, no, he'll switch his weights, and then he'll do his handstand walk. Mike now, back to his first set of bench press. He's going to use 185 for his sets of 8 to 10 before he transitions to the wall walks. Mia, I don't know what she's building up to. I'll ask her where she's going, but she looked like she's taking more of an extensive warm-up for these. 
One thing too, just to notice about CrossFitters relative to like bodybuilding communities or football cultures is that uh, it seems bench press relative to the all the strength things is a little bit less as an overall metric. Like, yeah, that's his first work set. What do you? Uh, uh, <laughs> Mia just said he didn't measure his wall walk line. Oh, and Chris is filming. <laughs> Chris is filming Kyle. What the hell's going on here? <laughs> All right, so Kyle did his handstand walk, and then he is now going back over to Mike. So Mike's going to do 45 seconds of handstand walk. He started. It's 115 on the clock over here. So one rep took about six seconds. Oh, and now back to Kyle doing a lift. Good, another successful lift. Then he'll probably keep the weight there, handstand walk. And now he's back to Mike. We're all over the place here on new show. We're, all right, so Mike is coming into 25 seconds total of wall walks. This movement now has really turned into a skill that we've had to train in the sport of CrossFit from this year's Open and this year's games. They use this movement for a test at both stages, the in the, op in the Open and then also at the CrossFit Games. So now elite athletes, it's not necessarily a scaled thing. It's something that they have to train. There's Bryn walking by. Kyle finishes his handstand walk. Back to Mia. Mia, how much is this? 95 pounds. I don't know if this is a working set or a warm-up set, but we'll find out real soon. There's a lot going on here. That kind of more narrow-handed bench press, that's kind of the bench press that most people in CrossFit start to develop. I think it's from uh, doing a bunch of burpees, needing overhead mobility, not allowing really the pecs and the lats to get over tight. I think that's one of the reasons why, what I was explaining why? before about bench press and CrossFit, why it's a little bit uh, lesser of a lift than maybe a strict press or the cleaning jerk. You just saw Kyle hit another successful lift, and now he's starting his handstand walk, and now we're up to Mia, who is measuring her line. She yelled at Mike for not measuring his line, but... <laughs> I have a line there. I used it yesterday. You just can't see it. It's faded. Okay, good. Good. All right, so Mia's going to do 45 seconds of wall walks here. Mia's kind of worked. She does, for all the gymnastics, she works to try to really refine her movement, the way that she does things. Uh, and she's done that with the wall walk. After it came out in the open, she's tried to figure out what's the most optimal way for her to do it. Um, and again, it's one of those things that I think if you have, you know, a body type that's not necessarily a gymnast, type body and you have to figure out how to excel in a sport that tests a lot of gymnastics. She's had to put a lot of time into body line, body control, uh, figuring out what works for her. Um, and it's showing that she's basically just sprinted wall walks for 45 seconds. And now time. All right. And then we're moving over to Harley and Kyle Habdo. Harley's getting some body work done on his lower back hey man <laughs> uh this is just part of part of being an athlete i think you go through getting tweaks getting your body beat up figuring out how to be more adaptive keeping things healthy i'm not even sure if harley's got anything going on all right i think this is the last lift for kyle Let's see nice stands it up nice very strong kyle's actually also a master's athlete kyle is I think he's the oldest between me, Mike, and me, Mike, and Kyle, us three. Uh, Adam's a little bit older than us. All right, and now, Mike, another set of wall walks. When are you going, 45? Yeah. All right, three, two, one, go. So Mike, this one little thing I'll point out technically as he's going, he has this but pushback technique where he gets his hips high and close to the wall. We did a wall walk workout and I think we did it and is it the last new show is gonna be the one that I just did? So they'll have already seen me do it? Yeah. All right, so as I did wall walks in that, he pointed out to me that my midline kind of got sagged in the middle and I was kind of using upper body strength. He said, if you get your hips elevated, you can kind of jump up the wall. So that's something if I decide I'm gonna do a little bit more wall walks and a little bit more competitive CrossFit as I get ready for the Open next year, I'll try to play with that technique to get a little bit more smooth there. Three, two, one, time. Mike was just trying to hit, I think, a certain number in each interval. 
Kyle, I think, is still in. I think this is his last lift. All right, let's see. So he's at 295. I think his opener was 325 that he ended up making, then maybe a 305 or two 305s and then 295. Um, Brandon's got it written down here. Let me see what this says. So he had 325, 305, 305, 305, and then this is 305. So those are 15s on the outside of that. Bam, still nice and strong. Stabilized, nice, yeah. That's re really, really impressive to be able to be mid-30s. He just did 325, 305, 305, 305, and 200 feet of handstand walking in about six and a half minutes. Just a really impressive physical feat. Part of the qualifier, I think he'll be high on the Masters leaderboard for Wadapalooza. And here's Mia finishing her last set of bench press. Mike, I think Mike is behind her, so he'll do his bench press after Mia does her bench press and then go into the wall walks. For this rep range too, um, and at a moderate load, um, sometimes, the, I hate to admit this, but sometimes we don't have spotters. I'd recommend if you're doing this, you always have spots for bench press. Um, if it's at this weight, you can roll it down, but just for safety's purposes, I'm gonna put that out there as a public service announcement. All right, Mia, what time are you starting your wall walks? Uh, 10, yeah. Two, one, go. All right, so Mia's got one more set of wall walks to do there. Mike's gonna start his bench press. This, for just people in training, this uh, can almost feel bodybuilding-esque. And I think this is one of the reasons why some people actually get more muscular doing CrossFit, doing a bunch of upper body strength training here. And then the contractions there, they're a little bit more straight arm, but they're pretty shoulder and arm intensive. So this type of training can also be looked at as bodybuilding. We used to joke around earlier, maybe it's nerdy of us to say, but like all training is training. That CrossFit's not really that much different than bodybuilding or endurance training. It's kind of all principles that govern it. All right, Mia just finished her last set of wall walks. I think Mike has one more set of wall walks and then it'll be our goodbye for the day on new show. They're talking over, oh, and Jacob is getting the measuring stick. What is it, the measuring tape back in its little box. All right, Mike finishing his last set of wall walks. So he's starting. They kind of went into it with a different intention. You couldn't hear them talking earlier, but Mia was saying that she was sprinting them. Mike was going more technical, just trying to get a certain number of reps. And I think that's a theme that you'll see with Masters athletes. And it's kind of interesting that Kyle was competing here and Mike is a competitor and was on our games team that they go through these cycles of less intensity and more intensity pretty regularly. And I think that's helped with longevity. Mike's been doing CrossFit since 2009 or 10 and was in the games in 2013 and then again in 2021. So it shows a pretty wide uh, history of competing. <laughs> Did you ask how much that was? No one was counting, man. I was blabbing. <laughs> All right. Chris just said, let's go talk to Kyle about what he did. Are you done? Yeah, I'm done. Okay, so you can talk. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, can I talk? What do I do with my hands? Tell us, <laughs> Tell us how the workout uh, That was the second Wadapalooza individual qualifier for the Masters division. Um, that was what, seven minutes, it was like seven minute cap. You got five attempts at a clean and jerk with a 50 foot handstand walk between each one. I went 325, 305, 305, 305, 305. You missed your first one. Yeah, I just Before. started. Yeah, so. At 325? Yeah, I don't want to give away secrets, yeah. but if your workout. This is going to be after. Yeah, be after. This will be after. <laughs> if your workout starts with a 1RM, do your 1RM attempt, and if you miss, just start your clock and your camera over and do it again. Veteran play from a veteran athlete. <laughs> All right, so Kyle's done with the qualifier. Mike and Mia. Oh, Mia's got one more set. Oh, Mike warmed up so fast. <laughs> I, Mia said, I'm real bad at counting. I'm going to make her do this one time and try to pay attention to everything going on and talk at the same time. <laughs> See if she counts. That's true. I did. 
Uh, so I just said that. Now I'm just going to stand back here as a safety spot with, oh, man, Chris just almost got railed by that assault runner and Travis going by. Situational awareness, everyone. There's a lot going on here. All right, Mia finishing up. Wonder if it's annoying that I'm standing here and talking, so I'll whisper into the cam into the mic as if she can't hear my whispers. <laughs> Done. All right, so last set of bench there, and then moving into a 45-second wall walk to finish the actual training day. We didn't give away the full training day. Will we write that up? You want to just tell them, go look at the computer and tell them what the next part yeah. is? Yeah, Mike, can you pull up the computer and get what the next part of this training day is? Can you get the next part of this training day? Can you just get your computer so I could explain to them what it is? All right, so we'll watch Mia do this last set of wall walks, and then I'll explain what the rest of the training day is in this training day. Mia and Mike were just demoing the first portion of it. Could be figured the new show's great and all, but we don't want to make it too long. I don't know if I can talk for too long. All right, training session. All right, so we did A and B. That's what you just saw. C would be two sets. Starts with 200 foot heavy farmer's carry. Rest 30 seconds. AMRAP unbroken toes to bar. Going all the way to failure on the toes to bar. Rest 30 seconds and then 60 second AMRAP rope climbs. Rest as needed between. Then the CrossFit portion of the day is on the three minutes for six to 10 sets, 500 meter row. Intention for there is sustained inter yeah. interval speed, right? Yeah, it's, it's repeatable efforts at the highest sustainable pace you can hold. Six to 10, that's obviously like, what, 18 to 30 minutes of work. So it just really depends on how much uh, volume someone has in the day or how much time they have for volume in the day. Yeah, so a 500 for people like ranging from elite to just regular would be somewhere between a 135 and like a 215, yeah. which means you're getting uh, like 120 to 45 seconds of rest per set. Yep. And that's the whole training day. We miss Mia doing her last set of wall walks. She Chris is here talking to Travis. Hey, ask him about Rogue. Travis is getting ready for Rogue. After that workout, fantastic. We're ready. Because it's the news show. Subscribe. Hey, you're, you're about to start singing and give us a countdown. It's the new show, new show. Why is it called new show? Nobody knows. It's new show. I just meant I was going to play it. Hey, leave us a comment if you would like to see a 90-minute episode where we did the full training. Are y'all into that? Do y'all want to see a long session? Let us know. It's new show. It's new show. Why is it called new show? Nobody knows. It's new show.